about a little song that we have uh, somewhat prepared for. So it's not going to be perfect. Um, but uh, he is and he's deserving. And so we're going to give you what we've got. Amen. Amen.
story 
had been three days. His parents couldn't find him, but the scribes and the Pharisees were all gathered round him as a boy in the temple, speaking with such wisdom. They were all amazed at what he said.
daybreak as the crowd slowly gathered they were walking my lord up old cavalry's hill so sad was the scene there that the birds hushed their singing like a lamb he was humbled to his father's own to thank Jesus for the plan of salvation just to say Lord I love you for you understand and I want to as he hung there in shame and forsaken as they drove those old nails in his feet and his hands as his eyes closed in death his his cry went to heaven saying father Praise the Lord. Bless you. Well, praise the Lord. 
preach to you this morning. I got a lot of things on our heart and uh, a lot of places in the scripture on our heart. And uh, we want to do the best we can just to be obedient to what the Lord would have us to say and, and to do. And I want absolutely nothing less, nothing more. I want to be right in the center of his will. Amen. You got your Bibles, turn with us to Isaiah. I'm going to read to you some of my favorite scriptures. I preached this morning at the, at the three crosses up there, the, the sunrise service. There's an empty tomb. Still an empty tomb. I got one amen out of this whole crowd right here. Now listen here. I'll preach to 3 o'clock if we don't straighten up. Amen. I got about seven messages right here in this Bible right now, and I'll pour them every one out. If uh, I, I, Listen, it ain't nothing me to get in the flesh after the Lord has his way. I got two of you in life. And listen, the, the ones that's life and knows that I'm not lying. Amen. Amen. I love you this morning. Appreciate you. Isaiah 53, let us all stand to our feet. I want to give you the title of the message this morning, Not One Sacrifice. Not One Sacrifice. Said Isaiah 53, verse number 5, it said, But he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him, laid on him the iniquity of us all. Jesus Christ knew no iniquity other than mine and yours. Somebody say amen to that right there. And it goes on and it says right there, it said that he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to slaughter. And as a sheep before the shears is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your wonderful grace and your mercy and all you do for us. God, we're grateful, Lord God, to be in in your house, Lord God, this day. Father, thankful for yet another privilege, another opportunity, God. Father, we pray that you would have your way. Father, will you just ask God, do you know that there's absolutely no good in me, Lord God, other than you? And Father, I pray this morning, Lord God, that you'll anoint me, Lord God. Help me to stand and help me to preach, Lord, this morning, Father. I don't want to preach anything other than what you would have us to say what you would have us to do, Lord God, nothing more and nothing less, Father. Father, I need you like never before. Father, we, our, our, our church needs you like never before. Our families need you, Father, like never before. We're in the last days, Lord God. I know that, I, I know that, Lord God, according to your word. And Father, know that it's a matter of time, Lord, before, before you look at your son, Jesus Christ, and say, son, go get your bride. And Lord, I'm so looking forward to that day but Lord I have to believe with all of my heart Lord that you're 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 stealing this thing for just a little while Lord you're 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 tearing your coming just for a little while because you know there's that one little lost lamb Lord and Father you know right where they're at this morning Father I pray that if they be in within this crowd Lord God I pray that you would draw them like never before Father I pray that you'd make hell real to them Father I pray that that you would make the fires of hell, Lord God, be upon their feet this morning. Father, I pray that they not keep their seat, Lord. I pray that they can't keep their seat. Lord, I pray that they be absolutely scared to death this morning. Father, for we know, Lord God, that that that, that the day is coming, Lord God, as to when you're going to call us home, Lord. And, and Father, that there's going to be so many, so, so many that's not going to be ready. That so, so many, Lord, that believed upon everything other than than your blood, Lord. And Father, I pray this morning, Lord, that you'd help us to preach, help us to love. Lord God, help us to to fellowship one with another, Lord God. And most of all, Lord God, that you would be honored and glorified in everything said and done. And the church said, Amen. 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 Thank you. You may be seated. There's a lot of scripture that talks about sacrifice. 
in the book of Levit Leviticus, chapter number 16, chapter number 17, in the Levitical times, there was, they was something that was put forth. Was, 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 they, they had to be a sacrifice for the sins of the people. So one time a year, the high priest would go into the temple and he would make that atonement for on behalf of the people. Now, I want you to understand and know this. It wasn't just any old way that he went in. There was weeks upon weeks and even years of preparation before the high priest could go into the temple and before he could go in, certainly to the most holy place. If you remember the, the sons of the, the, the priests that went in and tried to go into the holy place and tried to go in unworthily, and the Bible says that they were, they, they were struck down immediately. In the, in the days and the times in which that these sacrifices was put forth, that they were, that in that day and in that time that that high priest could go into the holiest of holy one time a year with, with a sacrifice and with the blood of the lamb and, and with the blood of turtle doves and he was able to make that atonement for, for, for one year. That word atonement means covering. It don't go away, it's just covered. Amen. It didn't go away. It was just covered. The sin was still yet there. It was just covered for one year. That's what had to be in place and that's what had to be taken place in order for God to be able to look down upon his people. You say, what a rotten bunch of people. Amen. There's, they're no different than what we are today. Amen. The only difference today is that we are living in under the period of grace. And we're in under, we're living in, we're not in under the law anymore, even though we go back and we study the law. Amen. But listen here, I didn't, it didn't take me weeks upon years to being able to come into the most holy place this morning. You know what it took? It took me being willing to come to the house of God. That was it. You say, why is that, Brother Tim? Because there was a sacrifice some 2,000 years ago that man Jesus Christ hung upon the cross of Calvary and he listen he hung upon that cross of Calvary but before that he was being beaten he was stripped he was spit upon he had things thrown at him hey man and the least little thing for the Christian people today the least little thing happens hey amen and we get sold up and we get mad we stomp our feet and say Lord we're not going back I don't know anybody this morning now I'm looking Looking at some long faces without my glasses are lying to me. I don't know anybody this morning that's sitting in Calvary Baptist Church uh, that has been beaten for what you believe. I don't know anybody that, that, that you've had to give up anything in order to be here this morning. Amen. Listen here. We are a blessed people. Amen. It says here that he was wounded for our transgressions. It wasn't for his transgression. He knew no sin. Born of a virgin Mary, was born the perfect birth. Amen. Carried the perfect message. Amen. To a, to a people that was unworthy. Amen. To a people that some of them wouldn't even listen. Listen here. When Jesus Christ was dying upon the cross, he was dying between, between two thieves, one in which that would receive him and one that wouldn't. You say how awful of a day and time that, that had to have been for him to look out and to know that one was going to receive him and one wouldn't. I say here we're still yet living in that day and time. There, the, listen, we can preach till we're blue in the face. We can tell you about God's love all that with all that we can. We can try our best to love you to Calvary, but friend, there ain't nothing we can do for you other than pray for you and to encourage you to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. And it's up to you to do that or to not. But I got good news for you. The, 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 as as the, the verse in Romans 5, 8 says, but God commanded his love and toward us and while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Even though that he knew that we were sinners, even though that he knew that in which that the, of the times in which we were going to fail and come up short and, and the times that we were going to openly bring dis, di, dis disgrace to his name, he still yet died for you and for me. A lot of scripture about sacrifice. Let me flip over here in the book of Hebrews. 
Now listen, I'm trying to hurry this morning. Got a lot on our heart. You pray for me, all right? Over in the book of Hebrews in the, in the ninth chapter, I'll get to that veil right here in just a second, amen? And we'll talk a little bit about that holy place right here in just a second, amen? I said a while ago, we are a blessed people, amen? We don't got to go to the high priest, even though some of you want to come and lay it on me. Listen here, you can lay your burdens on me if you want to, and you can just say, I'm going to talk to the preacher about this. Hey, man, you can talk to your blue in the face, and I'll pray with you. Amen. But there's some things that you just need to take to the Lord. Amen. I, I don't need to listen here. I'll share your burdens. I'll cry with you. I'll pray with you. I'll, I'll try my best to show you in Scripture the best way that I know how. But the best way I know how is Jesus Christ. The best way I know how is piled up at the foot of the cross. The best way I know how is call out to the Lord on your very own behalf. Amen. It says over here in the book of Hebrews in the, in the, in the ninth chapter, in the 24, or 25th verse, it says, Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with the blood of others. Did you get that right there? The, the high priest. Remember just a second ago I said that the high priest entered into the holy place how often? Once a year. But now there's something else that's taking place. <laughs> Woo! Of all the blood of the lambs and all the blood of the turtle doves and all the sacrifices, all that blood wasn't good enough. All it was able to do was to cover for one year. But blessed be the name of Jesus. Hey man, there come us the, 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 the lamb, the sacrificial lamb that I read to you about right there. It said that he was oppressed and yet he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. That's the precious lamb of God in which that I'm talking about. I'm fixing to jump over this pulpit, amen, hey, because there's something about that excites me this morning and it ought to excite you. How many of you is born again in here this morning? Raise your hands up high. Hey, man, there ain't nothing like being born again. There ain't nothing like being saved to the uttermost. There isn't anything like being saved and the devil ain't nothing that the devil can do about it, nor the angels of hell, amen. They can't prevail against it I say there's nothing like the love and the precious blood of Jesus Christ amen. I got some amens over here y'all better wake up this is y'all's crew hey shorty I say there ain't nothing like the precious blood of Jesus one time a year that high priest entered into the holy place for the covering of sin. That was only a covering. But there's something special that's fixing to take place right here. <laughs> for then, verse number 26, Hebrews chapter number 9, it said, for then must he have offered, uh, offered since he, let me back up, for then must he have often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the end of the world, he hath appeared. Why did he appear? So that you and I could sit here today and to be able to raise our hands so that you and I could claim the blood of Jesus and have a hope of tomorrow so that you and I could have a relationship with God, the creator of all things. Amen. So so that you and I could bring praise to his name. Shorty, y'all better straighten up over there. Hey amen, I got an amen. All right, we're doing better. And it said here that he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice himself. I don't see nowhere in there that it said that he was coming just to cover sin. I don't see anywhere in there that he's coming that he had to come back again over and over and over for all you folks think you can, you can lose your salvation. Amen. Listen here, if you've got the real thing, you can't lose it. Amen. Amen. You got it, you got it. Ain't nothing the devil can do about it. Ain't nothing your wife can do about it. Amen. Ain't nothing your husbands can do about it. Hey man, if you got you got it, you got it. 
and you didn't just get part of it, honey. You got God the Creator, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. It didn't come in part. It didn't come a little at a time. But, honey, I got to hold on when I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. Woo! Hey, man, that may not do nothing for you, but it does for me. Hey, man. I knew it was going to be good when that little fella come out of this choir right here just a bit ago. Hey, you say, you're not preacher, you're chasing rabbits. You just hang on, honey. It's, it, it was 10 to 12 before I got to pulpit. Praise the Lord for that. Hey, somebody say amen. amen. Woo! But that little fella come out of this up here. Hey, hey, John, he come right down here. He looked at me and he shook his hand and gave me a fist bump. Glory! Hey, man, I knew it was going to be good then. I don't see where that Jesus Christ had to keep coming back over and over and over. But it said there that he came. He came one time. <laughs> oh, Tony, look here. Verse number 27, let me put my glasses back on. Verse number 26 at the end of it. It said here that he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice by the sacrifice, by the sacrifice, by the sacrifice of not just, not just turtle doves, not just turtle doves, not just rams, but the sacrifice of himself. You imagine this? The serpent. I think he's old snake myself in the garden way back there when things were perfect comes slithering his way up convinced Eve to let me just say this and then I'll move on you can't conversate with the devil and win you can't create a perfect environment for the devil and come out on top He'll consume you. The only thing that separates us and the devil killing you out right now, killing these babies out. Hey, man, he'd take my little Clayton if he could. Listen here, the only thing that's separating that is that God has drew a line and said you can do this, you can do that, but that's all you can do. <sighs> Hope that comes up. You can't conversate with the devil and come out on top. But when sin entered into the world, I believe this, God the Creator looked over at the Son and said there had to be a sacrifice. <laughs> Not just any son, but his only son. Yeah. And I believe this. I believe the Son looked at the Father and said, yeah. I'll go. Yeah. <laughs> Willingly. I'll go. What'd he do? He went. When he's praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, the Bible said that he was so distraught. <coughs> he was so distraught and heavy hearted. You say that cross was terrible. Listen here. I don't think it was a cross he was thinking about. I think he was thinking about me and thinking yeah. about you. Amen. Hey, man. And I believe this. I, believe, I don't believe he wanted to go to the cross, but I believe he did. Yeah. 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 The Bible said that he becomes so distraught that he sweat become his blood. I studied that out one time and I'll move on. I studied that out I thought, is that medically possible? And absolutely, you could get so distraught within your flesh, you could get so, I'm, I mean, so perplexed within yourself that your pores of your skin open up and you bleed just like it was sweat. That's what Jesus Christ did. He was praying as he was praying. After he got done praying and seeking God, he said, Lord... Lord, not my will, but thine. Amen. He asked him, he said, let this cup pass for me. Oh, but if not, give me strength. Yeah. 
So he appeared. He appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Not an atonement of sin, but to put a sin away. Now I'll give you the title of the message right there, right, 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 right there just a bit ago. And I said this. I said, not one sacrifice. You say, Brother Tim, you've been talking an awful lot about sacrifice up there this morning. We'll get to it in just a second. In verse number 27, and he said, and, and as it is appointed that a man wants to die, but after this, the judgment. You see here this precious gift in which that we received, this precious gift in which that was, was offered to all mankind, that John 3.16. Y'all yeah. know that John 3.16 thing, don't you? That whosoever. I'm glad, I'm glad that he said you, you don't have to be so smart to be able to accept the precious gift of life. I'm glad, he, thank goodness for this, I'm glad we don't got to be rich to accept the precious Amen. gift of life. Two amens out of the whole crowd. Oh, my goodness. I said I'm glad that we didn't have to be smart, and I'm glad that we didn't have to be rich. Listen here. When I got saved, I probably couldn't have told you two verses in this Bible. You know what? I'm glad that I didn't have to know it from cover to cover, but all I had to do is be willing to come and receive it. Amen. I promise you this. I guarantee you that if I had $1 million, which I ain't got, I'll just tell you, I could probably write you a bad check for a million, but that'd be the only way. But I promise you this, if I could lay down a million dollars right down here, right in front of this pulpit right now, and said, anybody that needs it, come and get it, I guarantee you I'd have to stand there with an AR-15 and guard it. But we've got a gift of God. That covers all things. And you can't beat people up here to get it. You can't beg people to come and get it. It's the antidote to life. It's the antidote to sin. It's an antidote to sickness. It's an antidote to all those things. And you can't beg people to come up and get it. I said, I said this, not one sacrifice. Verse number 28 said, So Christ once was once offered to bear the sins of many unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time. <laughs> Y'all believe that, don't you? Without sin unto salvation. I said, not one sacrifice. I met a little guy this past week, 2,700 miles away right now. He may tune in here in a little while. I hope he does. His name was Mateo. He couldn't half understand me, and I couldn't half understand him. He spoke good English. He said, I've never heard English like that before. And I said, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> he said, what kind of dialect is that? And I said, it's from Greasy Creek. He said, where? <laughs> Little Mateo. <laughs> he stood and he testified and he said this. He said, the Lord has been good with us. Uh -huh. Oh, he's been good with us. Yes, he has. <laughs> but he said, a year or so ago, I had to give up my young daughter. It's two years and ten months old. He said, I could do two things. He said, I could go towards God or I could go away from God. Yeah. And he said, I choose to go toward God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 
I say God's been good to us. Amen. I said not one single sacrifice. You say, how's that got to do with anything of what you're saying? It's all in which the that Bible talks about sacrifice. Yeah. Not one time has it ever <laughs> asked me to sacrifice anything. <laughs> you see, he's the sacrifice. Not just was he the sacrifice, but he's the ultimate sacrifice. That there had to be no more sacrifice. You say, Brother Tim, did you lose friends when you when you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? <laughs> no, I gained a whole bunch. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. You said you lose any family when you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and now you call to preach? No, I gained a whole bunch of family. Yeah. God ain't never asked me to sacrifice nothing. Why? Because the sacrifice has done been made and it was through Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen here, friend. If you're sitting here and you're lost today, he's not asking you to sacrifice anything. The sacrifice has already been made. The sacrifice, is, listen here, the blood of the one has already been satisfied through Jesus Christ. Amen. He's not asking you to give up nothing. Let me tell you this, when you, when, when you do come and accept him, there's not one thing that you turn away from. By the way, it, you just don't, we just don't count one, two, three, repeat after me thing and everything be all right. Listen here, there's got to be some repentance to take place. Amen. First of all, it's got to take the drawing of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Without that drawing power of the Holy Spirit, all I'm doing is, is, is wasting my time and wasting my breath. But amen, if the Holy Spirit's are working on your heart, listen here, if you're worried about where you'd go if you draw your final breath, friend, that right there is called, that right there is called conviction. Amen, amen that right there is called concern. And if you're sitting here lost and dying without God and you say, well, I'm lost but I ain't dying without, oh no, honey, death is on your trail. And if God tears his, his coming, death will surely find you. With or without. He's not asking you to sacrifice anything. The sacrifice has already been satisfied. Yeah. Right. Amen. You come to an old fashioned altar, you heard some pray. Some say they've got saved at home, praise the Lord for that. Some say they got saved outside by the oak tree, praise the Lord for that. Amen. But it took an old fashioned altar for this one to get saved. I didn't have to sacrifice nothing. All I had to do was go toward God. All I had to do was put one foot toward Him and He took care of the rest. All I had to do was be willful. All I had to do was be obedient. He carried me along the way so many times, Brother Donnie. You said, Brother Tim, there's been them hard times. Oh yeah, there's been those hard times. But in the middle of it all... <laughs> There was Jesus. Amen. Them dark nights, hey, when I maybe couldn't talk to my deacons or couldn't get a hold of the preacher or whatever, then them dark nights, hey, amen, listen here, in the middle of it all, there he was. Amen. I wouldn't call that a sacrifice, would you? I think I'll, I think I'll go toward Jesus. How about you? How about you? Now's when the battle begins. Lord's passed by your way time and time again. He loves you so much. He loves you so much. He ain't even got to do that. But he's passed by and he's bothered you. He's bothered you in times past. You see, the morning I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior, Brother Simpson, 
if he'd bothered me before. He'd come by my way before. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I sat there. I sat there and thought, boy, if I can just get out of here. What was I running from? I thought many times, what in the world was I running from? I had to do over again. I got saved when I was eight years old. Yeah. Live my heart and give my heart and life to him and I'd never be out, out in the world. I'd never, I'd never tried this and I'd never tried that. Oh, there's so many things I'm ashamed of. You know what I'd done? I'd got saved at a young age and lived my life for him if I could do it all over Boy, again. Yes. But we don't get a dry erase board. We don't, we don't get a redo. Honey, it is what it is. It's either his way or no other way. John 14, 6 said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You'll not get there on good works. You'll not get there on good looks. You'll not get there because you've done this or because you've done that. You'll not get there because your name's on the church roll. The only way that you'll get to heaven, the only way that you'll get there in the, in the presence of my goodness, of heaven and its angels, and all the beauty and glory the only way is through and by the blood of Jesus Christ and that'll be the only way I don't care if you're Presbyterian I don't care if you're, you're, you're holiness I don't care if you're Baptist I don't care how many years I don't care if you Pat Paul built the place amen listen here the only way that you will get into the, to the portals of glory is it'll be by and through the blood of Jesus Christ you can't live good enough Brother Danny sent me a clip just this week. I appreciate you, Brother Danny. <laughs> Had a young girl standing there. And she said, I live a good life. The fellow said this. He said, well, that's good that you can live a good life. He said, could we visit the Ten Commandments just real quick? And he went through just about three or four of them Ten Commandments. He said, have you ever lied? From the least little lie, have you ever lied? Yeah. yeah. Have you ever you used the Lord's name in vain? Ever been a time that you ever used the Lord's name in vain? Yeah. What about adultery? Have you ever... You ever had a thought? Yeah. He said right there, just those three, and he named off some more. But I think I've got the point across. He said, what if I said that you are a lying, adulterous, blasphemer now is that going to get you to heaven you can't live good enough you can't be good enough just to get in but it's going to take the precious blood of Jesus thanks be to God that he, he, he came he appeared one time to put away the sins of not just one, but all the billions and billions and billions and billions of people of the world. I say his blood is precious. And guess what? It took all of his blood. It took his life. And it's through and by his blood that you'll get there and that'll be the only way. What has he asked you to sacrifice this morning? You don't got to answer this, please don't. What did he ask you to forgive up this morning for him? Tickled me, Emery. Come on, uh-oh, she's here this morning. I think it's Emory. One time had a friend. Was it you or you? Emory had a friend. And she was Catholic, right? She was Catholic. 
I'll be easy. I know we're famine and all that, but it'd be by the blood of Jesus. As you get there, I don't care what you are. Right. It was so funny. Emery was just little. She's just little. I love embarrassing her when she's here in grace, and I praise the Lord. But Emery was just little, and her little friend come up, and she couldn't. She couldn't take, what was it that she give up? Ice cream or strawberries or whatever. She said, it's Lent. It was strawberry milk. She said, it's, it's the time of Lent. I give up strawberry milk. And her little friend looked at Emery. Emery loved her. So her little friend looked at Emery and she said, what is it that you give up? And she said, oh, honey, we don't have to give up milk. We give up sin. I want to ask you something this morning. What's the Lord ask you to give up this morning? Can I say to you, I'm going to try to close. 2,700 miles away, I was in a village a week ago today. 7 o'clock, the church service started. Church service their church is about the size of our cooking area back in our sanctuary, back in our fellowship hall. <coughs> That's what they call their church. We got there at about 10 minutes till 7. You say, Brother Tim, you must not been driving. No, I wasn't. I was riding. <laughs> 10 minutes till 7. Church started at 7. We got there. There was absolutely no lights on. Didn't see nobody stirring around. Brother Blaine said, I don't know if there's anybody here. It may just be us tonight. And I walked up and I said, nope, the door's open. See, they don't got air conditioning. The only power that they had in there is they had a little generator tied out that, at the side of it. We couldn't start church because somebody had to go get some gas for the generator. Gas is $14 a gallon. But as we come into that little bitty church, I looked at the pastor, and as the, as the folks started filing in, Brother Kale said, Tim, come here and look at this. <laughs> and as I what, stuck my head out to the side of that door, and I looked out throughout that village, it was dark, and there was little headlights, there was little lights coming from every direction. Filing their way into the house of God. They wasn't driving in their nice cars. They, you couldn't give them a car if they wouldn't, they wouldn't have it, even if you give them one. They come with their little lights. Oh, the little lights was everywhere. And as soon as they come into that the, to their little church. They'd pile on the altar first thing. Some of them stay there for a little while. Some of them was pretty quick. Some of them stayed there for what felt like an eternity. It was the people seeking Jesus. We're blessed. Amen. We're sitting here in an air-conditioned building this morning. Mm -hmm. Drove air-conditioned vehicles. Mm -hmm. yeah. Eat a big meal back there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Went to the church service and had the privilege of baptizing three. Mm -hmm. By the way, in that village the pastor named his next baby. All you to be mamas, listen here. He named his next baby after a pastor down in Mossy Grove. Mm. Tim is a wonderful name. <laughs> it's so funny. One of the missionaries, that was the other missionaries there, he said, the only thing I've ever had named after me, my neighbor named their dog after me. <laughs> I got to think about it. I thought, well, that's even better. That's better than nothing. Uh -huh. But as we sit there, thought I could have been right here. I could 
can be with absolutely nothing. Right. Absolutely. Right. But if I was, the Lord would be enough. Amen. What's he ask you to sacrifice this morning? What's he ask you to sacrifice this morning? He's not asking anything. He's not asked me to sacrifice anything. All he did was ask me to be obedient. Yeah, right. I ran from him when he convicted my heart that I was lost. I ran from him for many years. Wished I could do over again and I would have accepted him as a young man. Uh -huh. I'd have saved myself a whole lot of heartaches. I even ran from him when, I, when, he, when he put a calling upon my life. I ran from him. And why? All he was going to do is bless me. Listen, there's some, some sitting here this morning. We're fixing to pray. There's some sitting here this morning. It's either you're convicted that you're lost or you're convicted that God wants you to do something for Him. And you've ran. And you've ran. Listen here, if he's passing by your way one more time, if he's convicted your heart, if he's speaking to your heart one more time, it ain't because he has to, it's because he loves you. And he done all of what, what was done 2,000 years ago just for you. And he's not asking you to sacrifice anything. Let us stand. Dear Heavenly Father, we bow our unworthy head before you. Lord, I thank you. Thank you for the testimonies of those. Thank you for the biblical truth of those, Lord, that went toward you. Thank you for those that's sitting here right now. Lord God, that's been in your service for a good while. And Lord God, they're still headed toward you. Lord, I pray and ask of you this morning that you give me that same desire that I could go toward you. And Lord, I pray for that one that's here, Father, that you've spoke to and spoke to and spoke to. Little Lord, you just keep passing by. They tell you not today. Little Lord, at any moment, you could just keep on going. Never to come back by. Never to speak to their heart again. But Lord, you're willing. You're willing. For that one little lost lamb... Taught the parable that you took that 90 and 90 and you put them in a safe place. You went to where that one little lost lamb was at. Lord, I pray to you right now and I beg of you. Lord, that you'd speak to that one. God, I pray, Lord God, that you would use this time. Help us to see and understand and realize, God, that, Lord, all you want to do is bless us. All you would do is bless us if we would just be willing. Father, I love you so much. I thank you. I ask that those that's here, Father, that may have a burden, Lord God, whatever that burden may be, Father, I pray, God, that they'd come. Lord, I know that they can pray right where they're at, but there's something special. There's something special about coming to an old-fashioned altar and calling upon you. Thank you for my place. Thank you for our place. Thank you for your saving grace. Pray that you would convict, draw, and have your way, O oh God, we pray.
So it's in your precious name we do ask. Amen and amen.